Okay, so here's another polynomial function. We have a list of things that we need to fill out. Uh, the first thing is the x-intercept. Well, the first one is at the origin. So that's 0, 0. And since it's squared, uh, it means it touches. Uh, this is x squared minus 4. So let's rewrite this function as x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 5. So now I have another x-intercept. So I have this is 2, 0. And since it's an odd power, it crosses, and this is negative 2 comma 0, and it also crosses, and negative 5 comma 0, that also crosses. My y-intercept, well, if I plug 0 into this function, I get 0 times negative 4 times positive 5, which is 0. So my y-intercept is the origin again, which is the same as this x-intercept. My hand behavior model, if I was to multiply this out, I get negative x squared, so this would be negative x squared times x squared times x which is negative x to the fifth. So my end behavior model, you always want to write y equals negative x to the fifth, not just negative x to the fifth. Since it's a fifth degree polynomial, the greatest number of turning points I can have is four. In this case, I actually have one, two, so I actually have four um, turning points. And I'm, uh, I'll give this to you. I won't um, make you guess how many mins and maxes you're going to have. So let's plug this into the calculator and take a look at the graph. So here's our function here. Let's take a look, look at the graph, excuse me, using zoom six. Um, and notice that um, there's some stuff going on at the top as well as the bottom. So let's go up first because it looks like we can actually attain these max pretty easy. So x max is 50, let's say. So we got all the maxes. Now we just need to make sure we get the mins. So let's go this out to 100, let's say. And I'm going to make this 25. Looks like 50 was too high. Notice how my y scale is one big uh, rectangle. Let's actually make that look a little more attractive. So let's go to 300 and let's change my y scale to 50. And notice how there's actually some tick marks on there. I just find that to look more attractive. Okay, so here's a min, here's a min, there's a max and there's a max. And we have some x intercepts, which we already know. So let's find this min um, and such. So therefore let's find our first min. So I'm just going to scroll to the left. So I'm to the left of my midpoint, so I press enter. I'm to the right of my midpoint, I press enter. And there's my midpoint, negative 4.11038. And now I want to find that max up there. So I believe max is number 4. So let's scroll to the right. Oops, probably too far a little bit. Press enter, and then let's just go to the right a little bit. Missed the point there, the cursor. In between there, there's my max, negative 1.340995. We have a min, looks like we have a min at the origin. It's like we've seen that a few times. So I'm gonna start there, and then I'm gonna go to the right. Notice that I'm at a positive 8.25. That means I'm up off the axes there. Again, this is the calculator's way of saying that this is 0, 0. And then lastly, I want to have this max over here. So that's enter. And then there's our last one. So I'm going to write this in on the paper. Okay, so here's a sketch of our function here. Um, so we have a maximum at negative 1.34, uh, another maximum of 1.45, a min at the origin, and then a min down here in the third quadrant at negative 4.11. So as I'm driving my car from left to right, uh, my function is decreasing, and then it's increasing on this interval here up to negative 1.34, then it's decreasing down to zero, so it's decreasing in between these two, then it's increasing on this interval right here, from 0, 0 to 1.45, then it's decreasing from 1.45 um, all the way down, so therefore it's from 1.45 out to positive infinity. So our first, let's do our decreasing intervals from negative infinity to negative 4.11. So there's our first decreasing interval. Our next de decreasing interval will be from negative 1.34 down to the origin. And then let's check out our last decreasing interval uh, from 1.45 
it's going down, so it's from 1.45 out to positive infinity. That those are my x values where my function is going down. So now let's look at our increasing intervals. It's increasing from negative 4.11 up to negative 1.34. And let's check out our next increasing interval. Looks like it's from the origin to 1.45. Four, five, one, three, seven, seven, two. So there you go. Decreasing, then it's increasing, decreasing, increasing, and decreasing. And notice that I put parentheses on all of these intervals. So this is interval notation, it's called. This is not an ordered pair. This is an interval going from negative 4 point to negative 1.34. So therefore, we're going from negative 4.11 to negative 3.4, but we're not including those values because we said that you're not increasing nor decreasing um, at a point that you turn um, from going up or down. If you were to include those points, you would put brackets on them. So if I'm going from 0 to 2 using um, less than or equal to, that would be less than or equal to less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. If I'm just going from 0 to 2 but not including 0 and 2, that would be written this way. So this is how uh, this notation is read. From zero to two inclusive means it's less than or equal to, it means you're including zero and two. From zero and two not inclusive, that means you're going from zero to two, but you're not including zero and two. So it's just less than, it's not less than or equal to. That wraps that up. Great, thanks.